Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another Jant 4 video. Today I'm going to be going over the latest release of G4 Bremsterlung version 0.3.0 Alpha 1. So if you guys are new to this channel or this is your first video, G4 Brems is a scientific model of Bremsterlung radiation in Jant 4. So let's look at G4 Brems version 0.3.0 and I'll demonstrate it real quick for you guys. So first thing you'll probably notice with this new release is the detector setup's a little bit different. I'll explain that in a bit. But if we run the simulation, let's do run, beam on, just do 100. So first of all, you'll see over here on the right, not only are we recording the energy, but we're also recording the position of each particle as it hits this detector. You'll also notice here on the left that the beam is a lot more clean and completely just made of photons instead of having electrons mixed in there as well. One more small change that I made was there's a new Mac file now called run one. So this is just a basic test run. So if I double click on this, you'll see, I think it just shoots out a thousand particles. So, but this way it's easier. If you don't want to type in the command, you can just run that Mac file. All right, everybody. So let me walk through the code for you guys and just show you the changes that were made. So first of all, we added a couple new classes to G4 Brems. We added the hit class and we added the run action class. We also added a very simple hits collection class. For now, it's so basic that it didn't even deserve its own header file or source file. It's just hidden here in the run action file. So first we're gonna show you guys the hit class. My hit class is inherited from the G4V hit class. Basically what a G4V hit class does is it stores the information of a particle during a hit. And a hit is like when a particle hits the detector. So going back to G4 Bremsterlung, when a particle hits that detector, I wanted to record the energy and the position of the particle. So to achieve this, I've created this hit class. And basically all it does, it just has two member variables, energy and position and basically two functions, set energy and set position. And then G4V hit also comes with a print function, and that's gonna be helpful when we wanna print all the hits to the console. All right, let's go to the source file. And it's pretty basic. In the constructor, we basically set the energy and position back to zero. And then as far as our print goes, we have a G4C out, have energy, and then print out the energy with the best unit. And then we have a space and then position, and then we put the X, Y, and Z position right there. All right, guys, now that we've talked about our hit class, let's go over and look at our run action and hits collection classes. So here we have the G4 user run action file. This comes from the Jamf4 source code. And basically what a user run action class does is it allows the developer to create logic at the beginning of a run and at the end of a run. So like I explained in the last video, when you're running a GAMP4 simulation, you're going to type the command run, beam on, and a certain number of events. So a run is basically the whole process of completing all those events. So in my own run action class here, I have, I'm overriding the begin of run action and the end of run action classes. And I also created my own method called add to gamma hits. So I created my own class called hits collection that inherits from our G4T hits collection. And basically G4T hits collection is a class that kind of holds a bunch of hit objects in it. It's called like a template class. And so it's sort of like a list in a way, but you have to specify what kind of object it's going to hold. So here I'm specifying that it's going to hold hit objects. Yeah, this, this class that I inherited is very basic. Everything's default but I decided to just add it in here just in case in the future we want to add our own logic into this class. All right, guys, let's look at the source file for run action. Basically, at the beginning of each run, we're going to dynamically allocate some memory to our hits collection. Then at the end of our run action, we're going to delete that hits collection. So during the run action, we're going to end up calling this function, add to gamma hits, and it's going to insert one hit into that hits collection. And then at the end of the run action, we're going to print all the hits from the hits collection. So this method print all hits, this is built into the hits collection class. And what it does, it basically calls the print function of every single hit object that's in the collection. 
So now we have our hits set up and our hits collection set up. The next problem I had was telling the program when to create a hit and when to send it to the hits collection. So for this, I had to modify stepping action and event action. So let's start with stepping action here. So the only change that was made to stepping action was we are getting some information about the position of the particle as it hits the detector. All right, guys, slight modification to our event action class. Now it takes in a run action pointer in the constructor. And the reason for this is because our event action is going to end up sending some hits over to the run action. So basically, the event action handles the hit class, and then the run action handles the hits collection. So everything's pretty similar as last time. The stepping action will call these functions add energy, and it's just going to add energy to this energy member variable. And then now we're introducing the set position function, and it's just going to set the position member variable to the position. And then the difference now is at the end of the event action, we have stored up the energy and the position. We're going to create a new hit object. So basically, if the energy is greater than zero, which means a particle actually hit the detector, then we're going to create a hit object, set the energy to our energy, set the position to the position, and then we send that hit over to the run action class, and the run action is going to store it into the hits collection. So real quick, I'll show you guys one more time the run action class. Here's where we use this method. Add to gamma hits. It takes in that hit that we sent from event action and it just inserts it into our hits collection. An insert is a method that's built into the G4T hits collection class and basically just adds something into that list of hits. So I might as well show you guys the update to the action initialization class. We have to initialize a new user action, which is our run action. And in this line, we're getting that pointer to the run action so that we can pass that into the event action constructor. So you may be wondering, how come this release is so similar to the last release? It basically does the same thing, it just takes in some information and prints it out to the console, right? Well, the difference is on the last release, we weren't able to save that information anywhere. It was just getting printed and then deleted, printed, then deleted. The difference now is this release has like a different organization to the code. And basically now in our run action class, we have this hits collection that's taking all of the hits from the run and storing it in one place. And each hit has the energy and the position of the particle stored in it. So in the future, what we're going to end up doing is before we delete this hits collection, we're going to push all that information into a file and create some graphs using that data and stuff like that. So it's really nice that we can hold all these hits together one place because in the future, we're going to be able to do some analysis on the data. So I need to explain why the detectors are set up a little differently in this release. So in, in previous releases, we were just trying to make sure the whole thing worked. So we just had the basic parts implemented, the tungsten target, the collimator, and the detector, right? In this release, I wanted to get some more accurate geometries. So I found this research article, and I'll leave a link in the release notes. But from this research article, I got the measurements of an actual linear accelerator and exactly how far apart everything is placed, how big everything is. And so I implemented this into my project and I can already tell the beam is a lot cleaner and a lot nicer. And all in all, it's just a lot more accurate because it's actually based on a real medical linear accelerator. So if you look through my detector construction class, everything's very similar. We just have slightly different measurements. And then we added one more geometry. We added a graphite absorber. So this is made out of graphite and it sits right behind the tungsten target. And basically what it does is it absorbs all of the electrons. So the electrons hit the tungsten target, they create bremsstrahlung, but some electrons contaminate that photon beam and get through. And so this graphite actually lets the photons through, but absorbs all the electrons. So that way on the other side, we have that clean photon beam that we saw in the example. Well, cool guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I would appreciate some feedback if you want to hit me up on LinkedIn. Um, I always appreciate you guys supporting me. If you want to donate, 
uh, on one of those websites linked in the description below as well. And in the next videos, I'm going to implement analysis into this code. So I want to create graphs. I want to create a bunch of data. And so stay tuned for that. But that's it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you later.